me tell you a little bit about myself and, and my story and how I uh, grew up and got to where I am. Um, I was born to a 17-year-old uh, a mother who desperately wanted to get out of the house and a very angry alcoholic father. I was kind of like the emotional punching bag for my dad. I was the first of two boys. Uh, my dad uh, did a lot of projecting of how he felt about himself, which was not, not good, he didn't know at the time, and he projected it onto me. And essentially what I learned is that I was never good enough. Some of you might relate to that a little bit. And um, I learned that uh, I really wasn't, I wasn't anything. I, I experienced a lot of intensity that I was fortunate that I was tolerated as a human being. And because really inside I had a lot of good stuff, I became hypercritical of myself. Or we have fear of the future, but we're everywhere but here. We're everywhere but where we are because we don't know how to deal with life head on. The stress usually is about the future. Okay? The depression is usually about the past. But if we can't be right where we are, then you'll always be tight and you'll always be in fear at some, some level because you can't read the future. We all have challenges, but it's not about what happens? It's about how we deal with it. Life happens. It's not always what we would call fair. You think you can, but you can't, right? I mean, fact of the matter is that any one of us could drop dead right now. This very moment. We have no control over anything. Nothing. The only thing, well, the only thing we have control over is volition, our volition. We have control over our attitude. That's it. Bada boom, that's it. But we live in an illusion that we have control over all kinds of things because things generally go our way. But when the illusion doesn't work out and I make a plan and I don't have the outcome that the plan is supposed to reflect, life has thrown me a curveball. And either I'm terrible or they're terrible or something happened. And we begin to go into a major judgment. Why? Because we're in fear. We're in fear of losing something that we've got or not getting something that we want. History or length of time the, the universe has been around is less than a blink of an eye. The entire human race, not just me or you. So when we think about that, sometimes it's easier not to take ourselves so seriously. When is it ever going to happen that everybody's going to like us? And if somebody doesn't like us, how does that translate into I'm not good? My anger was really like a shield to hide myself from people seeing that I believed I was a failure. Okay. It's kind of like if a, a rock comes off the back of a, of a truck and you're driving and it's right at you. You know, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? A little rock's coming at you. You flinch. You, you duck. You do something, right? Usually the arms go up. It's kind of an instinctive thing. The arms go up. Why? I ask guys, they're like, come on, Evan, what are you asking me? Why? Because the arms, better to get hit in the arms than in the face, right? Why? Because the face is more vulnerable than the arms. Makes sense. So we go to protect ourselves this way in order to protect the face and the chest. So this can be a metaphor. This is the shield. This is a metaphor for this is anger. It protects me, or it can be even stress, or it can be anxiety. It protects me from, from having to deal with, with the fear and the stuff underneath that is so vulnerable. The feeling that, oh no, I'm going to disappoint my parents. Sometimes you've got to choose, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Winning isn't everything, okay? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. The workshop aims to better understand those with anger problems. 20 area therapists turned out for the Inside the Mind of an Angry Man seminar at First Christian Church. Psychologists say it's important to know angry men commit violent acts out of fear and vulnerability. They add anger is not an excuse for bad behavior. If you understand the mind of an angry man, then you're going to take less personally what they do to be able to uh, see that this is not necessarily a rational person when they're really out of control and not try to reason with someone who's not rational. 
Katz says the typical angry man is successful and personable, but his family life is falling apart.